Hi scholars, it's Mrs. G. I hope that you are having a great start to your day today and I hope that you are enjoying your lessons and watching your teachers teach you online. Um, before we get started today, I want to give you a quick review of what we learned yesterday. We started a new domain, okay, about presidents. And yesterday we learned about the president of the United States, right? And what he does, where he lives. And we also talked about some US American symbols, right? Um, so let's remind ourselves, okay, what those were, okay? So we learned that the president is the leader of our country, okay? And that our president right now, his name is Donald Trump, okay? He is our president right now. We also learned that the president lives in the White House with his family. And do you know who else might live with him? His pets, right? If he has any pets, they get to live with him too in that big White House, okay? So that's pretty fun. Um, and we also talked about uh, the president's office and it had a special shape, okay? It's a shape that we learned, we learned in math. Um, but the office, the president's office has a special shape. Do you remember what that shape was? Did you say oval? Because you are correct, right? It's called the Oval Office. And it's called the Oval Office because it's actually shaped like an oval. Okay, that's pretty neat, huh? Yeah, so, and then I also, uh, at the end of our lesson for your assignment, I had you draw two important American symbols. And so you had to draw those on a piece of paper. Um, maybe some of you drew the American flag. Okay, because it's a very important American symbol. Um, maybe some of you drew the Statue of Liberty or the Lincoln Memorial, or the Jefferson Memorial, okay? So maybe you guys drew a couple of those symbols, okay? The very important symbols for the United States. Well, today we're going to learn about our very first president, and his name was George Washington, okay? Do you remember that the capital city is Washington, D.C.? And we talked about how it's named after George Washington? Well, I'm gonna remind you, that a president is elected and chosen by the people. So when a president gets chosen, it's because the people of that nation vote, okay? They vote who they want to be president, okay? And that's how, that's how our nation is different from other nations where maybe back then we talked about the colonial times, right? And we talked about um, kings and queens and how it was different back then, right? Because we don't have a king, okay? We have a president, okay? So, um, the president has lots of responsibilities, okay, because he or she helps lead our country, okay? So, uh, the, there are so many ways that we can honor people, okay? Just like we talked about um, the monuments, right, that they were named after people, memorials, they were named after certain things, okay? But there are other ways to remember and honor people, like telling stories about great things they did, and that's what we're gonna do today. Okay, so we're gonna read a story about the great things that George Washington, the very first president did, okay? So before we begin, I want you to think about what it takes to be a good president and what kind of person do you need to be to be able to lead a whole entire country? What kind of person do you need to be in order to lead a whole entire country? Okay, so that's going to be your think, pair, share at the end of the lesson, okay? So think about that while Mrs. G is reading the story, okay? And then I want you to especially listen carefully to reasons why George Washington was such an honest person, okay? I want you to look for and listen for reasons why George Washington was such an honest person. Okay, and honest is one of your new vocabulary words, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn about that too. Okay, we're going to have some vocabulary words um, throughout our story, and then Mrs. G will show you vocabulary words so you can see them. Okay, you can actually see them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and begin our story. So let me go ahead and share our screen. I'm going to share the screen with you, and it should already be up. Mrs. G made sure this time that it was already up. So, and it is, so you should be able to see our screen. Okay, and it says presidents and American symbols, and our lesson is called A Dishonest Story About an Honest Man. Okay, so who do you think this is a picture of? Who might you think this is a picture? Remember I told you we're gonna learn about today? 
He is our very first president. Do you remember his name? Did you say George Washington? You are correct. Good job. Kiss your brain. Remember I said if you get it right, you get to kiss your brain, okay? All right, here's our story. Almost everyone likes a good story. Some people especially like true stories that tell how real people did real things. Other people say, I love made up stories best. A person who tells this kind of story can decide to leave in only the most interesting parts and even make sure that there will be a happy ending. However, there is a third kind of story that mixes together true and made up stories. Let me give you an example. This story is called a dishonest story about an honest man. So honest means truthful. Okay, that's what the word honest means. It means that you're being truthful and you're being trustworthy, okay? And when you hear the word dishonest, it means that you're not being honest, okay? So this is gonna be a story that's not really true about a man who was really truthful, okay? All right, here we go. Augustine Washington loved his farm by the river. He loved the rolling green meadows in which he raised horses and other animals. He loved the woods. He loved the rich soil that allowed him to grow plants for food on the farm or to sell in town. He loved the fruit trees on his farm that gave him beautiful flowers in spring, delicious fruit through the summer and autumn, and graceful shapes to look at in the winter. So if you look at this picture here, this is young George Washington with his father, Augustine Washington. This is young George Washington when he was little, and this is his father, Augustine Washington, okay? Augustine especially loved his cherry trees. When his son George was about five years old, Augustine said, George, I will teach you which sorts of cherry trees grow best here and how to take care of them so that they will grow tall and strong and give delicious fruit. Okay, so do you think that Augustine's cherry tree was important to him just by reading what we've read so far? How can you tell? How can you tell? Okay. So you can imagine how upset Augustine was to find one day that someone had chopped down one of his prized trees. This particular day he was walking with his foreman a man who worked for him and helped him run his farm. Augustine said, this was no accident. Someone did it on purpose. Look how neat a job of cutting this was. No wild animal could have done that. Who would do such a thing? His foreman replied, I just can't imagine who would have the nerve to do it, sir, or the reason. So when someone cut down his cherry tree, what do you think, or who do you think cut down the cherry tree? Who do you think, looking at this picture, is there a hint that maybe might tell you who cut down the cherry tree? Caught up in their conversation, the two men did not notice little George Washington approaching from the house. The boy silently listened to the two grown-ups. He looked at his father's face and saw disappointment and anger. Can you see George Washington hiding? He's hiding behind the tree. I wonder why. George stepped forward, looking pale and worried. To the shock of his father and the foreman, George said quietly but firmly, Father, I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the tree with my little ax. I wanted to see if I could do it, but now I know it was a bad thing to do. Augustine Washington looked at his son. He could see from the expression on his face. When Mrs. G says expression it, mean, expression, it means the look on his face, okay? So when someone has a look on their face, you can almost kind of tell if they're angry or happy. You can kind of tell by the expression that they give on their face, okay? He could see from the expression on his face how badly George felt. Meanwhile, the foreman, surprised by the boy's confession, turned back to look at Augustine Washington. Okay, when, I, when, when it says confession, it means that the boy was admitting that he was the one who cut down the tree. You're admitting um, that, you, that you did something or you saw somebody do something, you're confessing, okay? That's what that means. 
He thought, Mr. Washington sometimes has a very bad temper. Poor George, I hate to think what is about to happen to him. But to his surprise, he heard the father tell his son, it was a bad thing to do, George, and you should be punished for doing it. However, I respect you for coming forward and telling me the truth that if you will promise not to do such a thing again, I shall not punish you. So when someone says that they respect you, it means that they think well of you, that they admire you, okay? So they respect you. And so his dad, his father, respected him for coming forward and telling the truth, even though it was a hard thing to do. I know in my life, sometimes maybe I did something, I did something that I wasn't supposed to, and I felt really bad about it. And it's a hard thing to do to go admit that you did it, right? But it's a really good thing to do to always tell the truth and to be honest, okay? I promise, Father, said George, and he kept that promise. So you see, even as a young boy, George Washington was honest and took responsibility for his actions. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us could be like that? That is a famous story of George Washington and the cherry tree. It's a lovely story, isn't it? There's only one thing wrong with it. It never happened. You might ask me, do you mean that George Washington was not really that honest? So if it wasn't true, was George Washington really that honest? Actually, he was. After he grew up and became president of the United States, one of the things for which he was most famous for was his honesty. A man named Mason Weems wrote a book about Washington in which Weems made up stories about that very real man because Washington really was the sort of person Weems said he was. Many people believed the stories were true. That is why I said at the beginning of the story that there are at least three kinds of stories, okay? Here is a made up story, but it is about a real person who acts as he often acted in real life. So the story that Ms. G told you was not a real story, but the person in the story is real, George Washington, and his character, the things that he did, meaning that he was honest, he was an honest man, that is real, okay? We call that kind of story a legend, okay? It seems funny, but Mason Weems, who admired Washington's real life honesty, was dishonest when he wrote his book. He never said, I made up these stories. People had to figure it out later. So, meaning that he didn't tell people that it wasn't true. So people thought it was true. So the people had to find out on their own that this story was in fact not true. The person that George Washington was, was true. He was an honest man and that was very true. Okay, what is even more interesting is the way in which people looked up to George Washington, okay? Looked up to is another way of saying uh, that people respected you. They looked up to you, they maybe wanted to be like you because you're so kind or you're, you're honest, okay? So when people look up to you, that's what that means. Washington was not perfect. He made mistakes as everyone does. A few times he made decisions with his friends disagreed. When that happened, they usually said, we would have chosen differently, but we know he made this choice for a good reason and not just to help himself. Even the King of England, King George III admired Washington. After King George lost control of the colonies to the people there who now thought of themselves as Americans, he expected Washington to make himself King of the new nation. Okay, so Washington fought against the king of England's armies for many years and he won, okay? That's how the colonies, started by the pilgrims and the others, became the United States, a country free from the rule of the king of England, okay? Washington gave control of the new army he led to the new American government and went home to Mount Vernon his farm in Northern Virginia. When King George heard this, he said, if Washington is so honest and unselfish that he would give up the chance to make himself a king, he is the greatest man in the world. 
okay? So do you think King George respected George Washington? Why or why not? Maybe you can share that with somebody. George Washington is often described as first in war, in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen, okay? And that's because of many reasons. George Washington was the most important leader in winning the war that freed us from the control of England and the king. So the American colonies no longer had to follow the rule of, king, of, of the king of England, okay? They now had liberty, okay? Remember that word? What does it mean? Do you remember what liberty means? It means freedom. So they now had the freedom to make their own laws, okay? Washington was one of the most important people involved in setting up the new government and starting the new country in the right direction. He was also the most admired and trusted person in that new country. What is this a picture of? Do you recognize who is on that dollar bill and on that quarter? Who is on it? Today, we still look up to George Washington. In fact, he is considered one of our greatest national heroes. And national just means having to do with the nation, okay? His face is on the front of that $1 bill and on front of the quarter. So, Mrs. G is gonna have part of your assessment later, okay? It's gonna be a surprise, so I'll tell you later. His face is on front of the dollar bill and on the quarter. All across America, there are cities, towns, and streets named after him, from Washington, D.C. to the state of Washington, which Mrs. G forgot to show you on the map yesterday, but I promise I'm going to show you at the end of the lesson where Washington is and where Washington, D.C. is, so you can see it for yourself on a map, okay? More than 200 years after he died, some people still ask, what would Washington do? when making important de decisions. George Washington never chopped down that cherry tree, but he left us something that blossoms brightly in all seasons, the example of a brave and honest man. Okay, so that was our read aloud about George Washington. And you know from listening that, um, that he was a very honest man, okay? He was respected by a lot of people. He was honest, okay? And a lot of people looked up to him, okay? So hopefully you've listened carefully um, to, reason, to the reasons why George Washington was very well respected. Uh, there were lots of reasons why a lot of people respected him, okay, and looked up to him. Um, so your think, pair, share for today with somebody at your house, like I always say, you can share with your mom or dad or brother and sister, or you can just share it out loud to yourself. Um, your question is, what kind of person do you need to be in order to be able to lead a whole country? Mrs. G will say that again, okay? What kind of person do you need to be to be able to lead a whole entire country. Okay, so that's your think, pair, share. You can just share that. You don't have to share that with me, but share with somebody at home. And Mrs. G wanted to show you that map before we get into our vocabulary and for your assignment for today, okay? Because I don't want you to forget. So hopefully you'll be able to see here. Mrs. G will make this a little bit bigger and I want you to look at this map, okay? I want you to look and I want you to see that over here, here is Washington, Washington, and then all the way on the East Coast, this is the West Coast, so all the way over here on the East Coast is Washington, D.C., right where this yellow dot is, okay? Washington, D.C., okay? So I just wanted you to see that for yourself, okay? So we're gonna go over some vocabulary really quickly before we go over your assignment for today. Um, our first word that we learned or that we heard in our story was confession. Say that with Mrs. G. Confession. And confession just means that when somebody admits something or says a person did something wrong, okay, you're admitting to doing something, okay? So maybe if you told a little lie and you felt bad about it and you went up to mom or dad and you said, mom, dad, I did lie, I'm sorry, that means you're giving your confession. Okay, and that's a good thing to do. 
okay? And another word that we heard in our story was honest. Everybody say honest. And honest just means that you're truthful, that you're truthful and you're trustworthy. People can trust you. And that is a good character trait to have, okay? And then we also heard the word legend. Everybody say legend, legend. And legend is a very old story or set of stories that are completely not true. They're not true. So Mrs. G read you a legend today, right? And the stuff in the story was not true, but the man in the story was true and his character, the way he was, was true, okay? And then we heard about the word national. Everybody say national with Mrs. G, national. And national just means having to do with or belonging to a nation, okay? Having to do with or belonging to a nation. And our last word is respect, okay? And respect just means to think well of someone because of something he or she did, right? You admire that person, just like a lot of people admired and respected George Washington, right? Because he was such a good, honest man. And that means you respect, you respected him, okay? All right, so that was your vocabulary. Um, your assessment for this um, for this lesson is the first thing you're going to do is you are going to answer two questions and then you're going to draw or you're going to send a picture for one. So the first question is, okay, is a legend a completely true story, a completely made up story, or a mix of both? So Mrs. G has your answers that you can pick from, okay? Is it a completely true story, a completely made up story, or a mix of both made up and not true, or and true, sorry, okay? And then your next question that you're gonna do is you're going to draw a picture of how you think George Washington felt when he realized what he did was wrong. How do you think George Washington felt when he realized what he did was wrong? Okay, so in our story, do you remember what he did? How do you think he felt when he realized what he did was wrong? Okay, so you're gonna draw a picture of what that looks like. You can draw a picture of George Washington and maybe um, let Mrs. G uh, see in your drawing what, what, how he felt, okay? All right, and then the last thing I want you to do is I want to see if you can find a dollar bill or a quarter. Maybe mom or dad has one in their wallet. You have to ask, make sure you ask, okay? And then I want you to look at the picture. Okay, you can see George Washington on the dollar bill and on the quarter. And then I want your mom to take a picture of you with the dollar or the quarter, okay? All right, well, that's all for today. So that completed our second lesson. We're on a roll, we're, we're moving along. Uh, Mrs. G hopes that you have a great rest of your day. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm here for you, I'm here to support you with whatever you need, and Mrs. G will talk to you later. Have a great rest of your day, bye.